The Russians are lying. That is the response from the White House as the Kremlin is now trying to blame the United States for the drone strike in Moscow on Wednesday. A spokesperson for the Kremlin claims that without evidence, this alleged attack was carried out by the Ukrainians at the order of the United States. And at the time of this attack, the U.S. said that they had no knowledge of anything planned and Ukraine has repeatedly denied any involvement. Meanwhile, this is some of the aftermath in the town of Kherson, where Russian airstrikes killed 23 people. This was the latest attack, happened on Wednesday at a rail station and some residential buildings. Early this morning, Russia fired two more or two dozen more combat drones at Ukraine, including several at the capital city of Kyiv. All were destroyed, but it is the third attack we've seen on the capital city in the last four days. Here to talk more about it, Paul Rykoff, a national security and political analyst. He's also the president of Righteous Media and the host of the Independent Americans podcast. Uh, good to see you as always. So Russia says the U.S. is behind this drone strike. The U.S. says no. Ukraine says we had no involvement. Is this a desperate move from Russia? How do you read this? I think so, Marnie. I think it's preparation. All of this is preparation for what is likely to be the most massive military engagement we've seen since World War II. This spring offensive that you and I have been talking about for weeks seems to be unfolding. And these are some of the provocations that I think are going to lead us up to that moment. You can't trust the Russians. They've been lying throughout this. They've been lying during it. And I don't think anyone can believe anything coming out of Putin or the Kremlin. And I think, frankly, if the Americans were going to hit the Kremlin and Putin, they wouldn't do it with two little drones. I mean, they'd make it count. This looks like uh, you know, a ruse by the Russians to try to justify increased brutality and a new wave of missile strikes, more civilian casualties, as we continue to see the combat not only unfold, but intensify here in the last couple of hours and days. The risk of escalation here is great, right? That's the concern. So we have to be wondering what Russia might try to do next, what, what's next in their deck of cards. Yeah, I mean, you know, escalation's always been a concern for over a year now, and we should always be concerned about what Russia can do in the most dangerous course of action. And nukes is always, you know, the, the biggest element in, in that calculation. But at the same time, we can't paralyze ourselves. We can't just sit back and watch civilians get killed, watch children be be slaughtered uh, because we're afraid of what they might do. We've got to deal with the reality of what they are doing. And I think that's why you've seen, I think, the 37th installment of American weapons that are now on the way to Ukraine. It's been tens of billions of dollars. And now Patriot missile batteries are there. German uh, Patriot missile batteries that are made in America are now in Ukraine. The American Patriot missile batteries, the American Abrams tanks will be behind that. And I think that's going to lead to an escalation beyond what we've seen before. But what that looks like, we really don't know. And escalation, likely miscalculation, is what we don't want. We're looking at some images of the Patriots. Talk about those capabilities. Well, they're going to help Ukraine secure the skies. They're going to shoot down missiles. Uh, they're going to provide anti-aircraft support. Uh, and they're going to help the, the, the forces on the ground move. Like, first of all, they're going to help protect civilians, which, which I think is key, which is why you saw Patriot missiles in the Gulf, uh, in, in the first Gulf War. It's why you see them in places like Israel, because you want to stop missiles from killing civilians. I think that's the primary concern here. But they're also going to provide overhead support for the ground operations that seem to be culminating in and around Bakhmud and could happen all across the country. I spoke on my show last week to an American Army Ranger veteran who is right now training the Ukrainian military forces for that effort. There are American veterans who have joined the fight. There are Western fighters who have joined the fight. I think that's an untold part of this story, but I think they're also going to provide unique insight for the American public on what's actually happening on the ground in that fight and the American weapon systems that I think are going to prove pivotal. Yep, and some of those weapon systems include high-mobility artillery rocket systems, howitzers, um, artillery and tank ammunition, tank weapons, small arms, trucks, and even trailers to transport all of this. Um, this is all part of the latest installment from the U.S. to Ukraine. Uh, what of any of this do you think will, will help to change the game for Ukraine? Well, it's firepower. I mean, it's literally ammunition. This has been such an exhaustive fight with artillery shells, with, with small arms ammunition. I mean, they, they need uh, to support the, the close fighting that's happening on the ground, the likes of which we haven't seen since Stalingrad in World War II. So this is a very brutal, uh, very conventional fight that's unfolding. And the American military industrial complex is being put to a test. I think we've seen that. But also, almost every weapon system in the military in the United States arsenal is being tested. So there's an advantage to our military. 
military in that. We're, we're learning what our military weapons can do, what they can't do, where the weaknesses are, and we're doing it without shedding military blood. So I think that's important. We're only delegating about 5% of the overall American defense budget, but we're seeing huge gains for the Ukrainians. We're seeing massive damage against the Russians, and we're getting to test our gear in a way we only could uh, in a way like this. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.